The New York Film Festival. It's one of the biggest festivals in the U.S. And I didn't go. But Sam did, and he saw lots of things, and I am very jealous, so let's talk about it. Hello, everybody. Welcome back to Oscar Rush Trevor here, joined by Sam as always. Sam just got back from NIF. He's still at NIF, still doing NIF things. Um, so we're going to be talking about the New York Film Festival. Thomas is at London. I'm leaving for Chicago in a couple days. But we wanted to get some thoughts from Sam on these films at the New York Film Festival. So let's get into it. All right. So we're just going to go in order that you saw them. So first of all, uh, May December by Todd Haynes. I'm seeing it in like a week and I'm very excited. It's incredible. It is <laughs> such a fun movie. It disregards structure and it is just kind of this freebie fun movie. So campy, so sharply written at the same time. Some scenes go on for really long stretches. Some scenes are like cut in a jarring way. The three central performances, of course, I mean, they yeah. talked about to death, but they're yeah. spectacular and so much fun. Yeah, it's really memorable. The score is really memorable. It's really instantly like striking. And someone tweeted this. They said, this might not be Natalie Portman's best performance, but it's the most Natalie Portman, Natalie Portman <laughs> performance. And I really agree with that. Um, as for awards, I don't know how much it's going to be getting, like maybe a screenplay nomination, but I'm I'm not too sure about any of them getting acting nominations sure. Sure. unless a lot of people fall <laughs> through. It's probably not in Best Picture because it is a little obscure and campy and melodramatic. Right. Um, yeah. But amazing movie watch it when it's on netflix yeah i am i am so so good for this i'm a massive fan of todd haynes like love everything that he does um i mean from poison all the way up until now like i just think he's a fantastic director um so i mean regardless of awards or anything that happens with that just really really hyped for this film um something else that i'm seeing in a couple of days that i'm very excited about <laughs> poor things <laughs> just it's it's a delicious movie i've seen yeah. it twice now and it is such a blast i mean bella baxter is one of my favorite characters ever she's so <laughs> relatable and so like real okay what's th what's that face well i just okay i mean i haven't seen the, the film but i feel like that's a bit of a an interesting claim <laughs> to me she's very real and relatable and I just love characters that have no filter and are brutally honest. Because I, I mean, to be fair, my my literally me character was Nelly Leroy from Babylon. So, <laughs> right. So you can't judge Bella Baxter. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Okay. Carry on. Oddly enough, I could actually see them swapping roles and the both of the movies still working really well. Yeah. Yeah. Well, because Emma Stone yeah. was initially supposed to be. Yeah, jealous, she was initially but... supposed to be. But I could, yeah. I feel like Poor Things with Margot Robbie would be a little bit more glamorous, a little yeah. bit more smooth. Less dirty. Less dirty, <laughs> but still really good. Um, yeah. Yeah, it's, it's amazing. Mark Ruffalo has a lot of tenergy. Um, <laughs> and I love the cinematography. The score is brilliant and so memorable. It's a really memorable, fun movie. Yeah, um, I mean, as you said, like just delicious. Like all the visuals look spectacular. You eat everything up. I I uh, I showed I showed the trailer to my film professor the other day, and when it was done, he was just like, "Well, yes," uh, and like that's that's all I can really describe my 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 hype for the film. It's uh, yeah, yeah. I'm so so excited. I know a couple people I've seen have have had some problems with it. Um, yeah, uh, I can see why. Like, there are parts of it that are slower. Um, and there are a few performances that didn't entirely work for me. Um, okay. But it's so much fun. So well written. Emma Stone is on fire. She's fearless. And yeah, Mark Ruffalo and Willem Dafoe are incredible. I hope all three of them get nominated. Um, so... I, as far as awards, we oh, are in agreement that it's, it's getting... not that is not winning Best Picture though. I don't think it'll win Best Picture. I also don't think it'll win Best Actress. Um, but I think it'll get nominated for at least ten things. I think the likeliest thing it is to win is probably script. Um, yeah, yeah, likely. Just yeah. because the dialogue is really like showy and and funny and and strong. Um, mm -hmm. but I feel like Emma Stone winning an Oscar for that role, a lot of people are like, it is hers. I didn't feel that way watching the movie. Okay. I think, I don't know how, I mean, I, I understand that in the fa last five years, the Academy has drastically changed, but the character she plays, I don't know how well it's going to go with the stuffy voters. Sure. Sure. But Regardless, I think like this is gonna be a ten plus nomination movie. I mean, like, uh, like text, like cinematography, editing, production, and costumes, makeup, 
sound VFX. Like it, it yeah. could get all of them. Um, three acting, directing, screenplay, picture. Like it's yeah. The, it's this 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 could actually be the most nominated movie, even over Oppenheimer. I think they'll be around the same. I mean, because this is probably its score as well. Like yeah, it, it could get really a lot. Should. This could get a lot. Um. Okay. Something that I I thought potentially going into this year could end up as my favorite film of the year is uh, Andrew Hayes' All of Us Strangers. Yeah, this is a really this is a really good movie. I was very tired when I watched this movie, so I do need to rewatch it. It also like it took me a long time to realize certain things because I didn't know anything about it. I did not realize that it even was in any way like fantastical or science mm-hmm. fiction in any way, yeah. and that kind of like threw me off for a lot of it. But it's a very beautiful subtle romance there's not a lot of dialogue it blurs the lines between fiction reality like when the movie ends you sort of like question what really happened and what this means um yeah it's a really beautiful film um performance is amazing yeah i mean i i really like you could hear the entire audience sniffling during certain scenes like the whole crowd was crying um so nice I, i mean the cinematography is what surprised me a lot there's also a sequence in the movie that was fairly like experimental and psychedelic and obviously i'm really into that um so yeah i mean it 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 was it did different things than i expected i didn't quite love it to the degree that most people do but also maybe i'll rewatch it when i'm not tired and i'll love it more yeah yeah i i think i'm going to love it a lot um it seems very much like a me movie um and just like i love i I don't know like i I love andrew hayes films already and this just feels like it's like a level up as far as like his like directorial um uh vision i guess as a whole uh from everything i've heard so yeah very very excited um as far as awards you feeling anything a lot of people think screenplay i mean i looked at what's in contention and because there isn't a lot i think i think maybe but even then i don't i'm not confident in that it's more out there than people realize and his movies don't tend to do very well with the oscars they are like this brand of indie movie that doesn't really get recognized by main awards right. bodies um yeah i don't i don't know i don't think so okay okay i i i, I have it in screenplay right now but that's it just as a lone screenplay yeah it would make the most sense as a lone screenplay nominee but probably not much okay okay and now to me of a fall you haven't shut up about this movie it's so good and i've said this countless times to you so you're probably annoyed of me saying this, but m- like most courtroom dramas, like pretty much every courtroom drama that I've seen, it takes itself so seriously. And the whole point of the movie is to like get to this historical climax and like find out an answer. Charles like, Chicago 7. <clears throat> sorry. Charles Chicago 7. <laughs> <laughs> there's, there's other examples. I need to like yeah. look some up to, to back my case here. But the point is they take themselves seriously. They have these intense scores and the camera work is moving around all the time and they're really zooming in and out on all of these characters yeah. and this doesn't do that in fact this movie does not take itself seriously at all in fact yeah. it, it portrays itself very light there's a light tone to it and that's why it works so well because you still take aspects of it seriously but so much of it is like verite cinema. And Justine Triet talked about it at the QA that she loves documentaries and she loves like raw footage used in movies. Mm-hmm. And she wanted to incorporate all of these styles and it really worked. I mean, her vision is incredible. It's, I mean, she absolutely deserves a Best Director nomination. She would be so high on my ballot if I was an Academy voter. Um, yeah. And yeah, I just love like how funny it was. I love the tone of it. I love how authentic it felt. And it was really compelling because of how they decided to execute the story. Because it easily could have been a typical courtroom drama with a buildup and all of this intense filmmaking. But it isn't. So it worked really well. Yeah, yeah. And like, it seems like a massive level up for her as a filmmaker because I've seen her previous films and they aren't um, what you're saying and what everybody else has been saying they're yeah. just i i know i found them just fine um but this this seems really really special and, and i've also heard i mean a lot of that hinges on sandra huller oh sandra huller gives the performance of the year she's exceptional there's a monologue and you can see it in the trailer a little bit and she just it's she's just absolutely ferocious in that scene like her character is so dynamic in this movie like from the opening shot you know you're gonna love her. yeah it's yeah so she's so good no so excited to see her performance i don't i don't know if anything this year is going to be Greta Lee in past lives for me like that performance is just like everything 
Um, but I mean, if, if anything, it feels like this would be. Yeah, she's my one. favorite performance like, of the year. It's so good. Yeah. I really yeah. want her to win, but obviously, she, I don't. I don't think so. She's not gonna um, win, but it, it transitioning into awards a bit. I mean, like she's getting nominated. Yeah, I I don't see how this movie could be seen and she doesn't get nominated like even if the movie doesn't get best picture i still think she'd get nominated right and like screenplay probably right oh yeah for sure i mean i we all know about the song right right like that's a genuinely substantial component to the film's plot like name a courtroom drama that has a 50 cent song as a genuinely important piece of the plot. Uh, there are yeah. no others. Yeah. Um, yeah. Spectacular. Yeah. People have talked about this for a director. I don't think she makes sense for a director. The Academy already has problems nominating women. Now now you think they're going to nominate a woman for a foreign, like for, for a, a, you know, foreign to the United States, like an international film she, when she's not an auteur in a film that wasn't even selected for the international feature category. Yeah, I mean, like, she she could because the first woman to get a Best Director nomination was also a foreign film that wasn't submitted by the country. Right, but was <laughs> but like like she was an auteur. No, I mean, yeah, she was an auteur. Like, but, I don't think yeah, Justine Trey right. is at that point in her career she yet. She could, she could get it, but... I don't know. Like, they go for established, beloved names in the industry. I could see it just being screenplay, actress picture. That would make sense as a pattern. Yeah, and, like, I'm not worried about it in Best Picture, by the way. Like, I just, I'm not. I I think it'll be just fine. It's also, like, fairly broadly appealing. Yeah, yeah. But, no, I see this in uh, this week, like, in a couple of days. So, yeah, so, so excited. Now, you saw the uh, the, the thing that France actually picked, the taste of things. (laughs) Yeah, so the beginning, the the opening, like, few scenes of this movie are amazing. It literally just shows this kitchen, and it goes around, and it shows everyone cooking. And it's, like, you you don't want to look away. It's beautiful. And there's, like, a little girl in the movie. I won't spoil anything, but her character was my favorite. But most of the movie is just this kind of like tragedy love story between Juliette Binoche and Benoit Magimel. Magimel. And I wasn't really interested in the love story. I didn't really have investment in the characters to begin with. And the movie could have been at least 30 minutes shorter in my mind. It has great things about it, but I, I hate to use this word, but I was kind of bored for parts of this movie. A lot of people are not with me on this. A lot of people love this movie and think it's I, I'm still really excited for it. Yeah, I mean, you should be. It, it's, a, it's, it's the, the, the parts of the movie that I liked were really, really good. Okay, um, yeah. And I understand why it was submitted because Sandra Huller's character in Anatomy of a Fall literally doesn't speak French. Like, she speaks French, like, maybe one or two scenes, but she, like, talks about the fact that she doesn't speak French. Her character okay. speaks in English for at least 95% of her screen time. So when you have a film getting submitted for international feature whose main character speaks English, that's a little like, mm. right. So yeah. I understand that. And also The Taste of Things is the most French movie I've ever seen. And Juliette Binoche is the lead of the movie. Right. So of course they picked that. But from a quality perspective, it's a little brain dead. <laughs> <laughs> but I know I understand that it wasn't entirely because of that. So Right. <laughs> Damn. Okay. Um, As far as awards, like, I, I think it could probably get an international feature nomination. It could win. It could win international? It could win. I mean, anything can win, I guess, at this point. Yeah, it's because I don't know if any other international feature contender will be a big contender elsewhere. So if, if, if we have a year where the international nominees are only represented in that category, I could see this winning. Yeah, yeah. Maybe because, like, I mean, we're looking at uh, the other things that we're looking at is like Perfect Days, Fallen Leaves, um, Zone of Interest, which we'll talk about in a second. Yeah. Um, uh about dry grasses maybe so yeah this one would make sense it's it's friendly it's a very academy friendly movie yeah interesting interesting and oddly enough if best supporting actress is really weak maybe they could they could try and campaign juliette Binoche. that would feel weird it would feel weird but if if it ends up being really weak i suppose i suppose okay here's the one that i was maybe the most upset that you got to see because i missed out on on tickets at chicago and i'm very i'm really hoping that there's another press screen announced because i can't make the current one (laughs) evil does not exist the new hamaguchi movie i'm so excited i need it i need it now it's a very interesting movie. Shockingly funny, really raw, authentic. Oh, so good. Drive My Car is so good. Um, I didn't like it as much as Drive My Car, but then again, I don't like most things as much as Drive My Car. So right. There. Um, yeah, this movie, I, I, this is the best way I can describe it. So you can feel this movie's temperature. It captures this very specific environment of like, oh, 
winter day that's sunny. And that's like a very odd paradox. And you can like feel the temperature of this movie. The way he captures nature and still imagery and characters walking the sound design and cinematography are really important to that. And it makes it so immersive. There are sequences where the camera's still and it just shows the same thing for minutes at a time, but you're not bored because you feel so immersed in the environment. Hamaguchi does such a good Mm. job at emphasizing that. And it was really beautiful. And I know a lot of people are conflicted about the ending, but I saw it as this really interesting way to sort of emphasize the film's message about nature, about the dangers of environmental corruption and loneliness. And to me, despite it feeling, I could understand why people would find it jarring. I found it to make a lot of sense in the context of the movie. And I thought it to be very thematically challenging. Um, So I'm a big fan of the ending. I loved the movie. Um, Nice hour 45 as well, because I love movies that are slower and are slow paced because I mean, shorter and slow paced. Because they kind of like, I, I don't know how to explain it. Like when a movie, I, I talk about this to Trevor all the time. Like I, like when a movie is over two and a half hours in its slow pace, or if it's like an hour 40 or under in slow pace, it really works because they're either like really fully committing to it over a long period of time, or they're committing to it and making sure you get the most out of it in a shorter period of time, which is yeah. why I don't think this movie would have worked if it was like two hours and 10. Sure. Sure. Yeah. So um, it was fantastic. I love it. I, Sam, this is going to be like my favorite thing of all time. Yeah, it's it's very you. Like, um, like I mean, like Hamaguchi, like slow cinema, uh, focus on like nature. I've heard it's giving Reichart a lot. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. And like, like and it's about and it's I don't know, like and it's just, it just, like commentary it's about like, like capitalism in like rural towns. And like, I like this is going to be like my favorite movie ever. And it doesn't come out until next year. And I'm going to hurl myself out of a window recorded the screen and sent it to you i no i wouldn't experience it like that i'm kidding but yeah so so good i Um, need i need i need now like i who's distributing this like i need their email and i need films i'm emailing janice films like i need this now um okay the other thing that i need right now that might end up being my favorite movie of the year and is your favorite movie of the year the zone of interest (laughs) can i show you my face for literally all of the movie. Sure. <laughs> I'm not kidding. That I stayed in that expression for the whole movie. It is. <sighs> this is like what I want to see in a movie. Like this is yeah. also what you want to see in a movie. Right. It's it's, it's slow, challenging, slow, very challenging, rooted in theme. Experimental, weird, freaky, yeah. morally conflicting, and still leaves you with a million questions. It doesn't it. It asks so many questions and answers none of them. The best. The best. Um, the cinematography and the framing and the way this movie plays with time and color and music. Okay. I I, I know when when I when I say when people say, Oh, this movie has such a great score, like you can envision like a really interesting score and you listen to it and it's so cool and and it really like not only like enhances the film but allows you to remember it in a different way the score of this movie is unlike anything i have ever heard in my life it is not even 20 minutes long in all probably but the impact that it leaves and the way that glazer and um levy mika levy yeah 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 sort of place it within and, and and structure it is so unique haunting different like whenever you hear it it's like shit and i don't know this is gonna sound really weird and it might make you laugh but it kind of sounded like a burp like the way that (laughs) it has like a grumbling noise to it and it plays in these weird like chunks at times it's scary and it makes you so uncomfortable it's bone chilling it is one of the best scores of all time and it's one of the best uses of music i've ever seen in a film um the way the film ends is so interesting the way it begins is like the second it started i really want to say i just i'm just the the first like how do i say this um how do i say this i actually can't really say that but (laughs) the first few minutes of the movie like the second it started i was like shit I mean, I'm, I'm in something like this is crazy. Yeah. And beyond that, like the human story, it really makes you think because you watch these people and in some scenes, they are the most vile, disgusting, horrible psychopaths in the world. And in other scenes, they're just like us. And it is the most challenging 
mentally twisted thing in the world. And it's a fucking masterpiece. And I think if there's any movie this year that ends up on the sight and sound list in 2033, it's this one. Yeah, yeah. I am devastated that I'm not going to be able to see this in Chicago Film Festival. Again, I I need, like, press screening, please. Like It's unbelievable. I, I, I need to see this film. I I think it might be my favorite of the year. Like, it's my favorite movie of the year. It's incredible. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, last thing. Something that I don't think is going to be my favorite of the year. You saw The Holdovers. <laughs> I did. I just saw The Holdovers. Um, Yeah, it's it's not really a Trevor movie. I don't think you'll dislike it. I think you'll probably just yeah. think it's fine. Um, It was very nice. Um, very I nice. actually, Sorry. this is not, this is not a take that I've heard. I actually think that the directing is stronger than the writing. I actually really like this 70s style that he goes for. It's very distinct and cozy and the pa- pacing is very smooth and it does feel like a 70s movie in a lot of ways. I've seen uh, several 70s movies that really feel like this one. Um so I think what Payne captured here from a visual standpoint and structurally is actually very impressive. Uh the writing is where I had some issues. There are a lot of lines of dialogue that are kind of unnatural and cheesy but Paul Giamatti and Divine Joy Randolph are so good at their job that they make a lot of those lines sound really good um okay Divine Joy Randolph in particular is the standout she's wonderful in the movie she made me tear up on several occasions um and yeah I mean it's a really nice comforting story it you know it's it's weird to talk about this after talking about the zone of interest because this is not challenging in any way this is not right me like twisted in my own words it's just a really nice movie that you know if it won a lot of big awards i don't know how well that would age in the future because it isn't doing anything new um Mm -hmm. but i really enjoyed it um and i think that yeah it it has great performances um the writing like the the story is nice and and there is it it does move at a nice pace i just have some issues with some of the lines um but yeah there isn't too much to say about it um i don't understand like everyone i follow on letterbox has rated this like four and a half or five stars like i don't know why everyone i follow thinks this is a masterpiece but i feel like that's gonna fade yeah yeah i i mean i'll go in with an open mind but just like it just sounds like something that i'll watch and forget about and then be annoyed that people are like trying to talk about us something that's like as you said a masterpiece but again yeah. i haven't seen the movie I'll, maybe i'll love it who knows yeah i mean i could see you liking it but you're not usually like charmed into liking movies so i'm not. no i'm i'm i have i have no soul i don't i don't yeah. like to enjoy things yeah. who would ever like that um so yeah i i don't know uh we didn't really talk about awards with zone of interest but you don't think it's getting a single thing so Except um, international feature. Except international feature and like maybe. I, I know a lot of people think it could get like director, cinematography, sound, or score, or maybe even best picture. Listen, it is the best of all of those things of the year, unquestionably. Do I think that the Academy will will vibe with the movie? Probably not. The, the thing is, is that if any ceremony would, it would be the Academy. No, yeah, no. Maybe like the BAFTA. BAFTAs but... and the Academy would be the two to go for it, so... But even then, I actually feel like Anatomy of a Fall would have a better chance because Anatomy of a Fall is like the perfect combination of like artful and kind of mainstream. So this is not mainstream at all. So yeah, I wouldn't I wouldn't put too much on it getting nominations. Sure, sure. Holdovers award. Uh, picture director, actor, supporting actress, screenplay and editing. That's the most I think you could get. Um, Right. Do you think it can win screenplay? Not over Barbie. I don't see that, actually. Though though there is a pass for this to win Best Picture, which is screenplay. If it did win screenplay, I think it would probably win Best Picture as well as Supporting Act. But right. I don't know if it'll win anything. Yeah, that makes sense. That makes sense. I mean, Divine Joy Randolph, very aved about. Paul Giamatti, like, could get snubbed. Yeah, but he's very good. Yeah, yeah. We'll just, we'll see. We'll have to see what happens with the actor field. Um, Dominic Sesta, you said, isn't as strong. You know, a lot of people disagree with me on that. Um, he is good in the movie, but the lines that I said I didn't like, like he doesn't cover them up as well as Divine Joy Randolph and Paul Giamatti, but naturally that's not going to be the case because they've done a lot more work in this field than he has. Um, yeah, I don't really see him getting nominated. Um, but people disagree with me on that one. Maybe. Sure. Sure. Yeah. Um, and I wouldn't say that Payne is a lock for director. No, but I think he'll get in. Sure. Yeah, yeah. Absolutely. Absolutely. All right. Well, I think that's Niff. That is, that is, 
I still have a few more, but that's, I mean, the biggest one I have left is probably Maestro. Yeah, yeah. But for now, that's Niff. Um, Thomas is at London, and he is watching things, and he will be putting out reviews. I am going to be at Chicago International Film Festival in a couple of days, and I will be watching a lot of the East movies that we were just talking about, um, and it's going to be very, very exciting. So look forward to all of those reviews in addition to uh, lots of upcoming uh, Oscar predictions. We're getting back into those at the beginning of the month. Lots of things to look forward to. But until then, uh, you can follow us on social media if that's something that you're interested in, in addition to continuing to support the strikes in the links in the description. But until next time, thank you everybody for watching. Stay safe and goodbye.